Hello and welcome to Tuneballs Gaming. I am Scope, and once again I am here on my Steam Deck to talk about shader cache and compact data. Now this is especially prevalent on the 64 gigabytes version of the Steam Deck, but does also take up quite a lot of space on the other two models as well. Now this other section does also have other data in there, so games from other stores, anything else you might have downloaded onto your deck, videos, apps, emulators, anything really other just encompasses anything that is not a steam game so previously i'd got frustrated enough with this to write an app called shader cache killer which allowed you to selectively delete shader caches and compact data of things that you were no longer using or were taking up too much space or were just orphaned when you deleted the game from your steam library now this was fine for those situations, but for games you actually wanted to keep, you really did need the shader cache and the compact data. So other suggestions were to make a sim link of the shader cache and compact data folders onto the SD card, which is fine if you've only got one SD card, but if you've got multiple SD cards and external drives like I have, then that's not really practical as those sim links will break as soon as you remove the SD card. So instead, I decided to write an app that will let you selectively move shader caches and compact data for individual games onto the storage device that they are on. So if the game's on an SD card, you can copy those datas to the SD card. If they are on an external drive, you can copy them to there. And again, this works with multiple SD cards and multiple drives, all just to get everything off your internal hard drive. So at this point, I probably should say, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the disclaimer. That's right, the disclaimer. If this sounds dangerous, do not try this at home or at all. And if it offends you, just don't listen to it. So anyway, this is Shader Cache Mover. And here you can see the size of the Shader Cache for which game, the app ID, and whereabouts the game is actually installed. So my SD card will probably be named different than yours because I've got mine customly set up to use NTFS rather than X4 so I can use it with my Windows partition. But it will work just the same and the same goes for external drives. So simply select the caches that you want to move from your internal storage and click Move Shader Cache. This may take a while depending on how big the cache is back for blood for instance is 3.5 gigabytes so it will take a while i've also opted for moving shader cache and compact data to be separate because maybe you want to keep the compact data or the shader cache on the internal storage for performance reasons as there may be some with certain games i am not quite sure but it's entirely up to you which ones you want to move if at all so once all the selected shader cache is moved you just click OK and then open it again and you can go to the compact data menu and select which compact data you also want to move if any. So here once again I'm just going to move Back for Blood and Lonely Mountains Downhill both to my SD card where they are both stored and once this is complete I will do a few tests to show that it still works and maybe highlight a few performance differences. But first, a quick before and after. So previously, I had 34.2 gigabytes of other and 79.2 gigabytes free. And now I have 29 gigabytes of other and 84.1 gigabytes free. And as you'll no doubt expect, the opposite is true for my SD card, which has now got a larger other, as that's where we have moved the shader cache and the compact data. So let's get into some benchmarking. I've also thrown in Windows 11 into the equation. This is nowhere near a conclusive test. I didn't do many test runs, but as you can see, the internal cache took one minute and one seconds to load to the menu. The external took one minute 15 and Windows 11 took one minute and 13. To load from the menu into the starting area, Windows 11 basically took no time at all. And on SteamOS with the internal cache took 13 seconds and SteamOS with the SD cache took 14 seconds. So basically no difference. And just running around in game, I didn't notice anything different with the frame rates. They all seemed pretty similar. No dips or stutters anywhere. So at this point, you probably want to know how to run this. So it's simply a case of coming to my GitHub page here. And you can actually run this directly from the terminal without installing anything. So you can just copy this line of curl and paste it into a terminal. You can either run the shader cache killer or the shader cache mover, depending on which one you want. And it's simple as that. The shader cache killer is a little bit slower now because I'm basically harvesting data from Steam's website, which is a little bit slow. But it does mean it will show up more game names. And also for the same for shader cache mover, if you wanted to run this, simply copy the line of curl, paste it into a terminal, and you can run it directly from there. 
If you do want to install, there is also a line to install, which will add these things to your Steam library as shortcuts, which will mean you can then run them in game mode if you need. And of course, like any code you get off the internet and certainly any code that you copy and paste into your terminal, please, please do read the code. Make sure you're happy with it. Make sure there's nothing malicious in there. I don't want you thinking that I'm trying to delete or add viruses to your computer. And it is open source, so you are free to inspect anything you wish. And also, if you have any updates or bug fixes, feel free to add a pull request and send them to me. And just a quick note on Shader Cache Killer, this has been updated, the UI is a little bit better than it was before. Uh, it does also work now with the moved Shader Cache on SD cards uh, with sim links, so everything's fine there. I'm not going to cover this, uh, Munro's World did a very good explanation of this, so I will link you to there. The UI is different, but basically it works the same. So this is just a quick look at your internal Shader Cache, as you can see some of these things are now links. The green ones are things that are on my SD card because it's still inside my Steam Deck. And the red ones are an external drive because I've got this unplugged. This is why they're red. That means they are dead links. But once I plug it back in, they will be live links again. So that is essentially it. I've not made a way to uninstall this yet. But basically, if you need to uninstall it, just delete the link and delete the cache manually. I may change that in the future. But for now, I think this is good enough for me. And here's a little bit of Lonely Mountains Downhill, just because it's one of my favourite games. You should play it. So that is it from me, Scorp. Thank you for watching, if you did indeed watch this far. And I hope the code helps you out. And maybe check out some of my other projects, like uh, Auto Mounting and External Drive. Or, or Waking Up Your Main Computer. Laters.